In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have entered together as a Christian family to the celebration of the great feast of Holy Pentecost. On this great feast, the church has prescribed that 50 days after Pascha, we pay <clears throat> immense gratitude to the reality that 50 days after Jesus' resurrection, the Holy Spirit, as the Lord had said, would come down upon the apostles. And the Lord Jesus referred to the Holy Spirit as the Comforter. He said, when the Comforter comes, whom I shall send, who proceeds from the Father, he will come and bear witness to all things. And so the Holy Spirit comes to these apostles. Tradition says there are 120 of them gathered. The Panagia was there. Of course, the apostles and the other additional apostles, up to 70 other apostles that are considered in our church, and they receive the Holy Spirit. And the scripture says that it came like a rushing wind, and then on each of them was like a tongue of fire. And that Holy Spirit gave them comfort, gave them strength, illumined them, and they went out of that closed room where they were, and because many people were in Jerusalem at that time for their own celebration, that they began, the apostles began to teach them about Christ. And in the Acts of the Apostles it says, on that day 3,000 people were baptized. So in essence, the birthday of the church was on Pentecost, 50 days after Jesus' resurrection. There's a nice bumper sticker that I've seen where it says, Orthodoxy, preaching the truth since Pentecost 33 AD. So that's when the church began on that great day. And it was the Holy Spirit that activated everything, initiated, engaged. It's the Holy Spirit that offers to you and I, in your minds and in your hearts and in your souls, it's the Holy Spirit that has re revealed Christ to you. It is the Holy Spirit that has given you wisdom and understanding so that you know who your Heavenly Father is. A statue is not visible unless there's a light shining upon it. It is the Holy Spirit that's the light that shines upon Christ and His work and shines upon the Heavenly Father. And so this Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit wants to abide in us. The Holy Spirit wants to be one with us and, and says to us, I want to give you more wisdom. I want to give you more peace. I want to comfort you even more. It's a relationship with God because we are, as the Bible says, the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are the home, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now you can say, if this is the case, why can't I feel it? Well, for two reasons. Number one, we sometimes don't allow the Holy Spirit to fully work in our lives. Too often we handcuff the Holy Spirit. We limit God. It's kind of like having a guest in your home and naturally you're not going to give the guest access to everything in your home. You can be in the family room, here's the kitchen, here's your room, right? But that guest won't make their way probably maybe upstairs or maybe into your bedroom or maybe into your bathroom or your closet, right? We allow visitors up to a point and too often that's how we are with God. Lord, you can have a little bit of this part of my life. You can have a little bit of that, but you're not going to have complete access. You're going to stay back a little bit. I'm, I'm the king here. I call the shots. And so what happens, my beloved, is that we don't fully allow God to work. We've put handcuffs on him. And as I've said before, and I'll keep saying it, the saints are the ones that have taken the handcuffs off of God. 
And the Panagia is the one who never put handcuffs on God. I've said this image before, but I like it so much for the sake of those who haven't heard it yet. The idea of that when you began to write, it was your mom or dad who put a pencil in your hand and then put their hands over your hand. Your job was to hold the pencil. They put their hands over you and they began moving your hand. And all of a sudden you're looking at the paper and you see letters. I'm writing letters. I'm writing my name. But it's because there's a hand that's moving our hand. And too often our lives are kind of like when we were ready to write our own letters and we started moving our hand while our parent was holding our hand. And the next thing you know is we have scribbles. We're no longer writing letters because I'm working against the hand that is guiding me. So the Panagia was the one hand that when God put his hand over hers, he felt zero resistance. And he says, you will be the one that I will become a human being through because you are the most open to me. And throughout their lives, the saints were the scribblers too, but they more and more allowed God to use their hand. They more and more allowed God's will to be done. Lord, I want this, but I know you want that. Your will be done. And over and over again, they chose God's will over theirs, and that's what made them saints. Their repentance and their openness to God. So the Holy Spirit comes to the church on Pentecost, and likewise, the Holy Spirit will come to us today as the Holy Spirit always comes to us, but especially today, this is our Pentecost. This is our opportunity to invite the Holy Spirit in so that He can work with us and work through us. And the Holy Spirit, in these scriptures, the Holy Spirit is given 18 different names in the Old Testament. And the Holy Spirit is given 39 different names in the New Testament. But it seems like the most often understood idea of the Holy Spirit is the idea of pnevma, of wind, of breath. Okay, this idea of breath. Now in the Old Testament, in the book of Ezekiel, there is this valley with dry bones. And we even talk about it in an Orthodox funeral service, the idea of the dry bones in this valley. And the dead bones now come alive in that valley when God breathes on them. We read, prophecy unto the wind, prophecy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these dead, that they may live. And breath came upon them, and they lived, and they stood up on their feet, an exceeding great army. The breathless body is the lifeless body. Breath equals life. No breath, no life. The breath of God is breathed into the apostles on Pentecost. And it is the breath of God that is bestowed upon you and I in our baptism. Each and every time we invite the Holy Spirit into our lives through prayer. And today, the breath of God will be breathed upon us. In the St. John's Gospel, we read that on the day of the resurrection, the Lord, Lord appeared to his disciples behind closed doors. The Lord appeared to them and breathed on them. And he said, receive the Holy Spirit. This same Greek word, breathe is used in the Old Testament translation of Genesis 2-7 where it says, the Lord God formed man out of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. Henry Nguyen, a great theologian, wrote, the gift is the life breath of God himself, the spirit who is poured out unto each of us through our Lord Jesus Christ. This life breath frees us from fear and gives us new room to prayerfully go about our lives in constant readiness to receive the breath of God and to let his breath be renewed and expanded. 
The man who never prays, on the contrary, is like the person with asthma, because his is short of breath. The whole world shrivels up before him. He creeps in a corner, gasping for air, and is virtually in agony. But the man who prays opens himself up to God and can freely breathe again. He stands upright. He stretches out his hands and comes out of the corner, free to boldly stride through the world because he can move along without fear. A man who prays is one who can once more breathe freely, who has freedom to move where he wishes with no fears to haunt him. We, my beloved, can breathe in this Holy Spirit of God, the breath of God coming into our lungs, the breath of God coming into our minds and our souls so that we may be filled with God's grace. So this is what we celebrate, my beloved brothers and sisters. We, by our membership in this family, we have received the seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost has happened to us, and may each and every day may be a Pentecost. Amen.